Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some alternative tops to the lotus pod pendant that was made in a previous video. Now, the Online Jewelry Academy recently released a video about how to make a pendant that looks like this one here. And the response was tremendous. But many people wanted to know how I made the other tops that were shown in the video. So I'm going to use this opportunity to explain how I conceived of all of these things. So let me show you what happened first. The first thing that I did was I took a piece of paper, I drew some circles with a template, and I started to sketch ideas. And you can see they're really rough. Nobody's going to judge you on the development of your ideas, so feel free. And you know what? I made these three, but I might make these other ones later because I like all of them. So let's talk about these two at the bottom, which are these two here. Now, this one over here, where did I get the inspiration for that? Believe it or not, I looked at a photograph on Instagram of some people throwing beach towels in the air and they had been caught by the wind and I thought they, they looked great like that. I loved the shapes. So I just sketched them out onto my, temp, onto my pad and that's how I got the idea for this piece. Now the other one, I'll be honest, I love radial patterns. If I can make something that has a radius or a radial pattern to it, I'm going to go for it because I think it looks great. So I just sketched it out really quickly. Notice it's really crude, but it gave me the, the idea to carry it forward to do this one. So let's talk about this first. I wanted to develop very logical steps in order to be able to fabricate this piece. Now in this video, I'm not going to show you how to solder things together because that was done in the other video. I just want to focus on this top. So let's, let's take it one step at a time. The first thing that I wanted to do was apply my safety glasses because you always want to work safe in your studio or safely in the studio. Accidents can happen quickly, so be prepared. So I took a piece of 22 gauge sheet copper and I just put it into my disc cutter and I closed that down and I used the largest disc cutter that I had and with a heavy hammer I just punched it out. And there we go, right there. Now the next thing that I did was I used this tool here. This is a center finder. Now the way that this works is you place the disc at the bottom of one of the V's and then using either your scriber or a permanent marker, you draw a line against the straight edge in the center. Then you just rotate the disc to one side and draw another line. Where those two lines intersect is the center of your disc. Then what I did was I used my center punch to create a kernel where those two lines intersected. Then I placed the disc on top of a wooden block so that it wouldn't destroy the top of my bench and I drilled through the center of the disc where the kernel existed in order to create a reference point that I could use while I hammered the disc using the back end of my cross peen hammer. And what I ended up with was this. Now you can see that I've got a disc that has a nice radial texture that is centered around the center point of the disc. Then what I needed to do is thread this onto my saw frame. Now once I have it on the saw frame, all I needed to do was just make cuts from the center toward the outside edge very close to one another and I did this going all the way around the disc in order to end up with this pattern right here. Now in order to give the piece a little bit more depth you can see that I've added a little bit of blue epoxy resin to the center of the item. The blue is a good contrast to the copper color and like I said it gives a little bit of extra depth to that cutout. Now Copper and blue look good together, but I don't really want my silver ring to have that blue color in it. I want something more spicy and colorful. So I had a little bit of epoxy resin left from another project, and I just mixed the two-part epoxy resin together in a mixing cup. 
Then I added an orange tint to it. Remember, I wanted something a little spicier than the blue, and I mixed that into the resin. Then I put it into an applicator bottle so that I wouldn't get it on the top surface of the ring. I just put a few drops of the resin into the inside of the ring top and then just tilted the top around back and forth in order to spread it around and just give a very thin coating. Finally, I left the ring top set up so that it was level and would dry with a nice thin sheen to the inside. For this next top, what I did was I tried to create an illusion that that hammered surface went on forever. Now, how did I do that? Well, there's a problem when you try to create that illusion in metal. If you hit on the edge of a piece of metal, you're going to pinch it and thin it. And when you go to fabricate with it, you might have some problems. So to try to maintain an even thickness on the piece, what you want to do is what I did with this piece. I took an annealed sheet of 22 gauge copper and using the rounded end of a ball peen hammer, I hammered it like crazy. I hammered on every bit of that surface in order to give it a nice hammered rustic look. Once I had accomplished that, then I could take this piece to the disc cutter and just securing it in the disc cutter, I take my largest punch and put it in and then with a heavy hammer just give it a few blows and the result is a disc that looks like those hammer marks could flow on forever then what i did is i went back to my drawing and i took a good look at how those pieces were positioned and just roughly marked them in with a permanent marker so we could say that, you know, there's a little one at the top, there's one coming off the side. Now I'm just doing it a little bit more freely over here. But like I said, this inspiration came from objects that were just flying in the wind. I like to compose with odd numbers. Most artists do. So I put five of them in and they're all different sizes. So I have a variety of shape and size and position on the top of the disc. Then what I can do is I can take my center punch and using a striking surface and a striking hammer, I can just put kernels on the interior of each of these areas, just like that. And then with my flex shaft, I can drill through the metal plate and then thread the, each of these areas on my saw frame with the saw blade going through and pierce them out so that I can get an accurate cut for each one of them. After I finished the fabrication of the pendant, all the things that you saw in the other video or things that I at least discussed, things like sawing, filing, pickling, soldering, after all of that was done and I ended up with the finished pendant, I wanted to add the color to it. So I mixed up another color of epoxy resin, the turquoise color that you see here, and I used an applicator to insert it into the interior of the pendant. Now, one of the things that you might notice is that there seems to be a cupping of each of these little areas, that the blue looks like it's just coming up to the top. I didn't have anything to do with that other than just putting the resin into the piece. Because this piece is so shallow and because the surface tension of the epoxy resin is so strong, it started to pull itself up by the edges, but not come through the top surface. And personally, I think it adds a lot of interest to that piece. Now you know the secret of the two different pendant tops that we showed you in the Lotus Pod pendant video. Don't forget, you can make whatever you want. Exercise your creativity. If you like this video, you'll find plenty more like it on the onlinejewelryacademy.com. Don't forget that we regularly post to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you'd like to support the production of future Online Jewelry Academy videos, you can do so by signing up on Patreon. And if you're not a subscriber yet, don't forget to hit that button in the lower right-hand corner and subscribe now. Thanks for watching.